Welcome to TalkSunWeb.com. Today we'll be talking about socket programming in PHP. Uh, but for those of you that don't know, uh, there are libraries out there to just do socket programming with. They're really efficient, well written, and really helpful. That's something I'm going to be using in the next tutorial. But the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how PHP.NET is doing it on its own. How these libraries are using PHP based functions to create socket programming so you have an idea of what's happening in the background. The more you know, the better things you can create, the better you can debug or even understand what's going on. So, uh, one of the libraries that I'm going to be using, in hopefully, in the next tutorial is on socketo.me, socketomi, get it? And then the name of the library is Ratchet. It's really good. And uh, if you go to php.net, you'll notice that here's all the socket information, all the socket functions that these libraries are using. And without any further ado, let's get started with the tutorial, okay? So now let's first establish what a socket is before we jump into the code. A socket is basically when you go to a browser and you type in, let's say, talksonweb.com. Yes, I'm shamelessly promoting myself. Uh, when we type this into a browser, our browser goes and hits that server. Once it hits that server, it looks at port number 80. There's a specific port where this request is sent, and then that port sends back a web page. So the IP address of the server plus the port number, both of these combined is a socket. It is a place where a service is being provided. What is that service? It gives us back a web page. We request any specific web page we want, and that particular socket sends back a page to us. Uh, another particular service that is being run is FTP. When we go to our FTP client and we say, well, here's the IP address, go connect to it. FTP goes to that IP address and then on port number 21, the server responds to that FTP client and says, okay, you want to see all the listing of files that I have, here they are. But if FTP went to port number 80, it would not get that service because a different service is being run here. It's just to make things more common sense, you wouldn't walk into a deli shop and ask somebody to fix your car. You need to go to a mechanic to do that kind of stuff. So the server is offering different places, ports, uh, port numbers, where you can get those services. The IP address plus the port is referred to as a socket. Okay? It's just the terminology. Uh, the next thing that you need to understand is that uh, Windows offers these calls uh, these things services that are run in the background like you request a page and they serve you that page they consider that a service Linux refers to this as a daemon because it sounds cooler and actually they have other reasons for it but they refer to it as a daemon the service that they're providing you so let's look at that again if you could look at the Apache web server there's an HTTP D file what this file does is it listens in for any request that you make and then that file or that service that daemon returns you a web page so this is the service that is running on port 80 the socket so on this particular socket httpd the service or the daemon is giving you a web page so now that you know what a socket is what a service or daemon is let's actually create these things with our code so here's how PHP is doing it. Uh, you might recognize this function, set time limit. Um, if you ever create a for loop and made the mistake of not terminating it, where it just keeps running on and on and on, you notice that PHP just kind of stops you at one point and says, the script is running for too long. In this particular case, we're running a service. A service is always on. Uh, just like you know, you request a web page, that service is always running. Set time limit, and you pass in zero, saying that let this run forever don't terminate it. This is not a forever for loop. This is not a mistake. Let it go on. Next thing, I define my IP address. As you can see, I'm working on my local environment. And then I give the port number, which is 123. Now, we start with the actual socket functions. Oops. Uh, the first function is socket underscore create. All the socket functions are going to start with socket underscore. So the first thing we do, we say create. And then we pass in all these defined constants. If you go to php.net and let's jump to create. Where are you create? Here we go. Here's this create guy. If you jump to this particular location, you'll notice that they give you these constants and all the information for them. But what this function is basically doing is 
is telling PHP all the protocols that you want to use. The first one is saying you want to use the IPv4 protocol family. The second one is saying that you want to use TCP in the IPv4 protocol family, and then so forth. These you don't need to memorize this, but if you want to look more into it, just go to php.net. In the first step, first step, we need to say what protocols we're going to use. So that's what it is, and in return, it gives us a socket resource, saying that great, hang on to this because you're going to use this throughout the next functions. If this for some reason they weren't able to socket resource for you, they return the false value and notice the exclamation mark. We jump in for the error. I define an error function which, as you probably know, just throws an error message onto the screen. Now, when the socket is created, we save the socket resource here, and then I display an echo message on the screen saying that, look, the first step was done. Then we go to the next step, which is binding this particular uh, socket to a port. I define the port up here, which is 123, to this IP address and socket binds it and this socket is actually the resource that we created in step one. So we're binding this socket to this particular port. So now on port number one, two, three has now established into a socket. Okay? And then once this is created, uh, notice we're bypassing the error message. I display this onto the screen that hey, this is done. We're moving on to the third step which is now that we have the socket created we need somebody to listen in on it again notice how it's beginning with socket underscore as always then we say okay third step now listen to that particular port and which is that particular socket it's this one we pass in that same resource that we created in step one and if there's a problem we show the error I'll be showing you this uh, function that I created at the bottom of the screen okay and then finally when the socket is listening I display this on the screen for myself now that we now that in the first step we've created the protocol created a socket resource we bounded that particular socket to a port an IP which is our server and then now that we're listening in on it it's time to actually let people connect to it and then listen to what they're saying and tell them things